There, I just had a shower and I'm back from my pre-writer's workout. Um, that's how I start my day. A lot of writers I know, a lot of novelists, they go right from bed, sometimes bed, shower, computer. I know some who go from the bed to the computer, or some, some actually still write with their hands and a pencil and a pen, or some use a typewriter, but they basically go as quickly as they can from getting up in the morning to writing which is admirable, and I, I'm not criticizing it myself, I just never found it worked very well for me. And unfortunately, I noticed that a lot of those authors that do that routine have type 2 diabetes, they have weight problems, and they have other health problems. So, I, I don't want to uh, have a writing routine that is going to make me physically unwell, which I think would only hurt my writing. I rather write an hour less a day and go exercise first and write better. And for me, I believe that's how it works. There is actually a lot of connection between the benefits of exercise, blood circulation, oxygenation to the brain, and imagination, creativity, productivity. As you probably noticed in the video, I'm not wearing running shoes in the video, I wear earth runner sandals. Minimalistic sandals, plug here. Grounding cord goes all the way through the lacing. Well, not a cord, it's a wire. So you ground it to the ground, minimalistic. The reason I wear these instead of running shoes, I actually have very expensive running shoes that I haven't worn in six years, because the running shoes kept on giving me knee problems, uh, hip problems, feet problems. And it wasn't until I read, I like reading books and I like writing books. This book here, Born to Run, I really recommend it. By Christopher McDougall. He had the same problem as me, his leg. Uh, I think it was mainly his foot would keep on getting pretty badly hurt every time he went running. And his doctor kind of said, well, don't run. And uh, uh, instead he went to Mexico in the canyons and found this tribe of people who have been running for thousands of years, at least hundreds of years. So up until like, I think age 90, they have old men who can run 14 hours. I mean, it's just incredible. And they're not having any feet problem, back problem, knee problem. What he discovered was, was because they use minimalistic running shoes, they just wear sandals similar to what's offered at the uh, company Earth Runners. And then this uh, causes you to run with a different posture. It's a, it's a bit technical. It goes into it, into it with um, a fair bit of detail. It's not as detailed as uh, this book here, uh, which I also recommend, Chi Running. It goes into much more technical detail, very specific detail, how to run in a, with a posture that's not going to hurt you, and actually makes running a lot easier. Uh, a lot of the reason people have trouble running is because they're not running in a way that is conducive to actually moving forward. I, don't, I would recommend starting with this book, though, because Born to Run... It, also makes many, many arguments that human beings were designed to run, that it's not only important for your physical health, but also your emotional and psychological, and illustrates uh, why human beings are unique amongst every species on the planet, that we are actually the best designed for running long distances. And we can actually outrun almost, I believe, any animal on the planet, even a cheetah, when we do long distances. Short distances were not very impressive. Short distances, a squirrel can usually beat us in a 500 meter dash. So this book gets you really excited about running, and it actually shows you how to run properly. Um, like I said though, Chi Running does a better job at showing you how to run properly. Uh, both books ignore how to breathe properly when running, which is another really big factor. For breathing properly, I recommend the oxygen advantage, because most people are breathing the absolutely wrong way when they run, and this is why they end up having heart attacks and other serious health problems. If you want to run for health, this book provides clear evidence that in order to do that, you need to do a few things. One, you need to breathe exclusively through your nose, which you may have noticed I was doing through the video, and that you shouldn't use your chest, but only your diaphragm to breathe. This will feel like you're suffocating at first, that's how it was for me. <laughs> I couldn't run more than, I don't know, five, five minutes. Uh, I don't even know if I could have done that much with my mouth closed and without using my chest. 
Now, as you can see, I can run seven kilometers, takes about 60 minutes, throwing in a bunch of other exercises, completely done with the mouth closed, nasal breathing only, not moving the chest, using the stomach only, the diaphragm, and I do not feel like I'm suffocating. If anything, I feel less out of breath. Like I don't, you don't have the uh, hyperventilation that usually comes with people running. When you stop running, you're able to just talk normally, your breathing returns completely to normal. So I, I would recommend like do not run unless you've read this book because a lot of people I believe are just hurting themselves. Um, they're putting themselves in a fight and flight mode. Uh, they're producing stress hormones and it's not conducive to health. Um, and this book also has a, a breathing test which you should take that will determine whether it's even safe for you to run. Some people's breathing is so bad that if they start running all they're going to do is more bad breathing. And then that is very detrimental when you breathe through the mouth and then especially excessively when you're running you uh, do a phenomenal amount of damage to the internal organs. Blood circulation is uh, not uh, flowing properly to the brain and the internal organs and neither is oxygen being released from hemoglobin properly. Vice versa when you exercise with your mouth closed intensely for you know at least an hour a day. Um, you retrain your brain to breathe properly, you retrain your brain to actually allow for higher CO2 levels which cause blood vessels to expand, more blood flow to the brain which I think is a really good thing for writers and there is a lot of connection between writing and a, a exercise running and imagination, creativity, productivity. So the only other book I'd recommend you read has nothing to do with running. Actually, there is a bit about running in this book, and there is a bit about breathing in this book, but that's not the focus of it. But this is the uh, first novel I wrote, and I wrote this. This is, a, I would say, a product of my writing workout that I do before I start writing. Before I come in here and uh, start typing. Actually, I, I do both typing and writing by hand. Most of this was written... The uh, entire novel was actually written by hand first and then um, transcribed onto the computer and then I went through about 15 drafts. It took about 1,000 hours and two years and uh, a lot of running. So I run six days a week, seven kilometers a week. So you're talking, you know, around seven, that's 42 kilometers a week and then you multiply that by 50 in two years. So there was a lot of kilometers that went into writing this book. You can uh, head over to much ado about Corona dot com uh, where I have a preview of the book. You can read prologue in chapter one and you can also listen to me read the prologue in chapter one. There's a replay of the book launch, there's plenty of testimonials, reviews and other interviews so it gives you the opportunity to get a good free sample of it but I recommend try out the prologue, try out chapter one, It's um, they're very short and see if you don't want to stop reading. The book's available almost anywhere uh, you can even get it at your local bookstore if you prefer not to purchase online or from Amazon. And uh, they can uh, get it on order for you. All the information's on the website. So I hope uh, that video inspired you to uh, look into um, all of these books. The Oxygen Advantage by Patrick McEwen. Chi Running by Danny Dares. Dryers. Dryers. Chi Running by Danny Dryer. Born to Run by Christopher McDougall. I recommend you stop. start here. I recommend you start here because this is a real fun book. I mean, even if you don't like running or you decide not to run, it's a great story. True story, too. And then, oh, I didn't even mention this one. Convict Conditioning. This has uh, taught me how to do all the calisthenic exercises, the push-ups and the squats. I actually do more uh, during my writing routine when I'm actually in the office. I can do another video on that someday. But um, this is a book uh, apparently written by a man who was in prison for quite a long time and he had nothing else to do but learn how to do progressive calisthenic exercises. So um, even if you can't do a single chin-up or a push-up, get this book because it will start you at exercises that anybody could do and build your strength up slowly and progressively so that you know one day you're doing one-handed chin-ups and one-handed uh, push-ups. So uh, that's, that's the uh, last book I'd recommend. 
Well, actually, um, and if you do nothing else, go to muchadoaboutcorona.com and have a look at my book, Much Ado About Corona, a dystopian love story. Thank you very much. Stay sane, stay real, and stay healthy. So folks, first of all, I strongly recommend that you do read the book. I thoroughly enjoyed it myself. It's also an excellent tool if you've got friends, family, uh, co-workers who are, maybe they're on the fence, maybe, maybe they're open to, to starting to hear the truth. This is a very non-threatening way of getting them thinking and introducing that conversation. So there will be, as always, a link beneath this interview to where you can purchase the book, as well as to John's website where you can sign up for his newsletter. John, thank you so much for writing this book. I know that you're now 90,000 words into the sequel, and I have to say I'm very much looking forward to it. There's a lot of people out there who are not going to respond to straightforward science and facts. Mm -hmm. They're just not wired that way. And so they can be reached with humor or they can be reached with a story. And we in the counter narrative movement, we really have to be starting to work on these various strategies to reach as many people as possible. And so I think that the novel that you've written is a very important tool. And I certainly hope that it does well and is widely read.